Hi everyone, in this video tutorial we're going to be going through the entire menu system. So we're going to go through each thing start to finish and we're going to start here on the home screen. So what you have right here are uh, all your different sensor readings that are currently displayed. Uh, the two buttons you have where it says inactive, that's actually a button and you could set it to either inactive, logging, which means it's sending sensor data to the cloud, or dosing, which means if there's any rules in place, those will be um, activated. So uh, we're gonna click on inactive. Now in order to go into the menu over there, you actually have to have the system inactive. Starting up here with sensors, uh, you have calibrate. So that is going to basically give you all the different sensors that you have and you can calibrate the sensors. Uh, if I just click on it, it's gonna walk you through a step-by-step -step process. So in this video, I'm not gonna really get into how to calibrate it. It should be pretty straightforward. Uh, we do include calibration solutions for you, so um, the process is not too difficult once you have all the right tools. Um, dissolved oxygen, it does not require any, um, it does not require any solutions, but it, you know, it says um, to wave it in the air, so it should be pretty straightforward. Okay, so here we have display readings. Now we have all the, the readings that are being displayed because we have all the sensors connected, so that's kind of how we'd like to have it. Units, if you need to change any of your units to whatever you need, millisiemens, microsiemens, and then the different PPM scales, also temperature, Fahrenheit, Celsius, you can do that right here. Pumps, so this is gonna show you all the different pumps that are connected to your system and you can scroll up and down to see all of them. Now the pumps are gonna appear if you plug in the pump, so if you were to disconnect one, one set, say you had two sets of pumps, you disconnected one set of pumps, you would just see the one. Uh, now clicking on the pump, you're gonna see a bunch of different options. So we have the option to change the name of the pump, to prime the pump, to calibrate the pump, and just to get into how this works, uh, what you're gonna do is you're going to have a um, a beaker or some measuring device. Now these pumps can pump up to about 200 milliliters per minute and this is gonna run for a minute. So you need a device that can actually read um, down to the one or two milliliters so that you can actually enter a singular, like a value that's down to the milliliter, but it's also over 200 milliliters. And so you're gonna need like a large beaker in order to do that. Uh, quick dose is a way to have the pump just add a specific amount of milliliters immediately and this is in milliliters so if you wanted to dose 10 milliliters or 100 milliliters you just enter that value and it would just immediately dose. The other option is time dose and it's the same idea as quick dose but instead of it doing all at once it's going to give you an option to do it over a specific amount of time and so that way say you want to dose I don't know, 10 mil or like 100 milliliters, but you want to dose it over an hour, you would be able to do, let's say we had 100, and then you would say an hour, 60 minutes. And then this is actually another option. Basically, say you wanted to have it do that dose and then you wanted to have it go back to the menu and activate again and start dosing, that would be possible. So we're not gonna go ahead with this, we're just gonna go back to the menu and then quantity dose, that's gonna show you the amount of milliliters that this pump has dispersed. So whenever you want, if you wanna reset it, like say you want it just to keep track of how many milliliters was used for one uh, nutrient bottle, um, you can always reset it if you're switching to another bottle. Okay, so now in rules, uh, but before we get to rules, I wanna show you one other thing, cause this is kind of like the setup process. I think that might be a good idea to go through first. So here we have setup. Now, one of the first things you wanna do is connect to your Wi-Fi. So you can see right there, we're, we're connected to our Wi-Fi network. It's pretty straightforward. It should show you the different networks that are available. Then you can connect to those networks and then you can use the Wi-Fi capabilities of the device. Uh, also the cloud, once you are connected to Wi-Fi, then you're gonna be able to connect to the cloud. Uh, we'll make another video of that. Um, and this will be in a separate video. Uh, but we can see that it's all connected and um, it's it's pretty straightforward there. Reservoir is actually pretty important uh, because that's how the dosing operates. Um, so basically you see you have a size of 100 gallons. So say you're saying, oh, I wanna have five mils per gallon or something like that. 
the device is going to know, okay, it wants five mils per gallon, but the, 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 the reservoir is a hundred gallons. So that means that we have to multiply our doses by a hundred. And so that makes it more intuitive for you to enter the stuff. Uh, but the system can also figure things out because it has that information. Mixing time is how long it takes to get mixed up. So basically say it doses and you want to give it 15 minutes once it's done dosing to mix around and then wait until it stabilizes so that when it's reading from the sensors, it actually gives you an accurate reading. Delay dose is another feature that basically say the, the sensors get activated. You can have it wait a certain number of time before it really decides that it should be dosing. Um, I mean, this could help for reasons such as, you know, you have maybe some type of a system where uh, water will go in that is a lower EC than it actually should be, but you need time for it to stabilize before it gets activated. Um, so again, it's not necessary um, in most cases to use the delay dose, but definitely the mixing time is something that you're gonna need. Uh, backlight schedule, that basically allows you to have some kind of a schedule. So like, say you, you have this in the same room as your plants and you don't want the light affecting uh, you know your plants day night cycles, especially when it gets dark. You can set a schedule so that once your lights go off, this can also turn off the display. And then once the lights turn back on, the display can turn on. And um, if the display is off, then you can touch the display and that's gonna wake it and then it'll be on for 30 more seconds after the last time you touched it. So that's that for setup. Uh, okay, so now we can go into rules. So now we know that how, how, it, how, it's, how it works getting set up. So all these are actually already created. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete it. I'm gonna click on EC. So this is the EC rule. You got EC, pH up, pH down. So how you create EC rule is you click on that and then you would enter the value that you want. So let's say we wanted it to be, I don't know, 500 millisiemens. And then you select a pump for the rule. So we're gonna select whichever pumps go with this rule. So maybe we have um, just, uh, we have veg A. Let's say we have five mils per gallon of veg A. Veg B, five mils per gallon of veg B. And then cal mag, let's say we had two mils of cal mag. So then we're done. And that's actually all you need to do to create a rule. When you go into the rule again, now you have the chance to edit it. And there's a couple more things that come up. So basically the way that this rule works by default is that you want it to be 500, uh, this is actually micro Siemens. And so what happens is it waits for it to go down to the activation, which in this case is 480 micro Siemens. And once it goes 480 or below, it's gonna turn it on until it gets up to 500. Now you might want this to be, um, to, to go down lower. Say you may want it to go to like, I don't know, 350. So now basically it's gonna wait until it goes all the way down to 350 before it brings it back up to 500. So you've kind of increased that range. Dose amounts, you see this is what we've entered. We could always change them, but we can also view what they currently are. And then the max step is 100 micro Siemens. And what that basically means is say, say we're 300, we're trying to get to 500. It's not gonna go ahead and just try to dose it all in one, one big dose. It's gonna jump up by steps of 100. So it'll go 300, 400, and then actually as it gets closer to 500, um, it'll slow down even more, but that's why the max step is 100 because it's not gonna go any more than 100 per dose. pH up and pH down are, are kind of similar. Um, the difference is that for pH up you or for pH you can't you can only choose one pump so we choose that the, the pH up pump in, in this case but you could choose whatever you wanted it's just um, you would want that one concentration so the way the concentration works is basically uh, what we recommend is to use a much more dilute pH solution we don't want you to pour the acid or base that comes in the bottle from the manufacturer directly into your system because that can um, not necessarily work well for your plants. I mean, if you're doing this in some in a batch tank, then it's okay, but if you're doing recirculating, it's better to have a more diluted solution. And so what this ratio is, is it means that it's one part pH solution and 10 parts water. So if you added, um, you know, let's say 10 ounces of pH solution, you would add 100 ounces of water together. So that'd be a whole total of 110 ounces. And if you want to change this, you can simply just put whatever value you have for the water, and that's what you're going to get. 
maxed up here, it's the same stuff. So everything else was about the same. Those are the only differences between pH and EC. Um, so then we have multi-dose, and this is another special dosing option. Now here, like we saw for the quick dose and the time dose, everything is in milliliters only. So you're adding a specific number of milliliters. Here, you're actually going back to that mils per gallon. So because we said it's 100 gallons, everything's going to be multiplied by 100. So we go through this, we choose whichever pumps we want for the multi-dose. So say we're doing roots, say we did 2 mils per gallon of this, and then maybe we did one mil per gallon of cocoa. Done. And then you get, you would enter how long you want this to take. So uh, say we wanted this to take an hour, 60 minutes, 68 minutes, why not? Uh, then we could set it after, set active after completion. So we could, we don't have to say yes, we could say no. And it's gonna show, okay, this is gonna dose 300 milliliters um, and that's gonna take 68 minutes. And so then you start and it's gonna go through the process of dosing and then it's gonna go through the process of mixing, and then it's gonna go back to the main. Um, so that's the multi-dose, so we can get out of that. Uh, we already went through most of setup, so the last thing left is system. Uh, here you can update, so we're on version 1.0.11, so that's, that's the version that you're seeing right now, so there, things could be changed in the future, but um, if things are ever, if there ever is an update, when you click here, you'll see that there's a later version. You can simply click update and then it will update about, you can see a little bit more information here, serial number, hardware version, um, the name device and the, the room of the device. Um, and then you can restart. So it's pretty simple like that. And a lot of these features are also available in the cloud, but it's important to know that you can basically do um, a, most of the stuff you need to do right here on the device and then in, the, in another video we'll go into how to set things up on the cloud. So hopefully this was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.